Remember that it says, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. The words of Jesus to his disciples as all part of his great commission message to them. He said, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. He said, if you forgive anyone, they'll be forgiven. He says, if you do not forgive, they will not be forgiven. Wow, <laughs> what a message. Thomas missed the forgiveness that comes from knowing the Lord Jesus and the joy of sharing that forgiveness with others. <clears throat> forgiveness that comes from knowing the Lord Jesus. Forgiveness, critical a critical part of the Christian life. We must be forgiven. To the crowd, Jesus said, let the one that has not sinned throw the first stone. And they began to leave the oldest one to the youngest. What a story that is. They began to go away because they knew we're all guilty. We all need His forgiveness. Only in the Gospel can we have this free forgiveness of our sins. Only in the Gospel can what is most needed be given. And God's people are given that blessing to share that message with others. Forgiveness. Healing comes from forgiveness. Wow. Faith in the living Christ is the way to complete and total forgiveness the gospel calling was that the disciples would preach the good news so that people's sins might be forgiven. Only God can forgive sins in the true sin. Only God is calling it. But God was calling them to preach the message of forgiveness so that all who would believe would receive forgiveness and an ability to forgive others. Jesus brought it up in the Lord's Prayer. If you don't forgive, then you, won't, you will not be forgiven. He brought it up. The critical issue of forgiveness comes by the grace of God's Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. And by receiving the Holy Spirit, God enables us to forgive, to receive His forgiveness, and to forgive others. Amen? Amen. Thomas almost missed this critical part of his life. Because he wasn't there. But he finally showed up at church. And what did he find when he showed up that day? He found the patience and compassion of the Savior. This is what he found. This is the Jesus we know. In verse 27, he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. He found the patience and compassion of the Savior. Jesus met Thomas at his weak point, his doubts. He met him there. Jesus is not afraid to meet you at your weak point. He'll meet you there. Whatever that point is, that's where His forgiveness is needed the most. Right? He meets you there. <coughs> Stop doubting. Believe. Stop doubting. Believe. Jesus knew what Thomas had said. Thomas had said himself, and, it, and it, I'm, I'm suspecting this is kind of like the story of Nathaniel that we studied early in like chapter 1, I think it is, in John. And, and Jesus said, I saw you out under the fig tree. And Thomas, oh, you're the Messiah, suddenly. Because Jesus said that. And that's all he had to say. I saw you under the fig tree. So Tom, uh, Nathaniel was certain. Certain. This is the Lord Jesus. He saw me. He was watching me. And here, the Lord Jesus was hearing every word Thomas said to those uh, friends of his that day. I'm not going to believe unless I, I see, I touch, I feel Him myself. Jesus saw Him. 
He knew every word he had said that day. Every one. And here, he says it. Stop doubting. Believe. Jesus met Thomas there. And Thomas made the great confession. He found first the patience and compassion of the Savior. Second, he found personal faith in the Lord Jesus Himself. This is his own personal faith. Don't let you take it away from him. This is what Thomas found there that day. He said these, this great confession of the Gospel uh, in the Gospels. Maybe, maybe one of the greatest confessions in the Gospels. My Lord and my God. We would expect to find that in John's Gospel because of John's emphasis upon the deity of Jesus Christ. We would expect to find it here a, such a certainty of doubting Thomas. My Lord, my God. He, he, I have to put my hand there into his side. I have to put my finger into the prince. But now he's saying he's my Lord, my God. What a change in the man. The confession he made. Wow. He found personal faith in the Lord Jesus. This is a bold confession. It's before others, but really, it's Thomas overcoming his personal doubts because of his Savior. This is a confession for himself, not just for everyone else. Thomas is overcoming his doubts. Maybe you struggle with doubts. Maybe it's, you know, it goes over. Satan has attacked you in the area of doubt and things in God's Word or doubting maybe even Jesus Christ or, or doubting your own personal salvation. Maybe Satan has attacked you in this way. But maybe today is a day for you to find what Thomas found. A Lord Jesus with great compassion and love towards you. Reaching out to you in such a way that your confession is He's my Lord and my God. He's my Lord and my God. John 20, 28 can become your confession as well as Thomas's. Wow. Finally, Thomas found the true meaning of the Gospel. He found the true meaning of the Gospel. And God's blessing received by faith in Christ for anyone who will believe. Did you catch that? Blessed are you who have seen me and you have believed. Because you have seen me, you have believed. I'm sorry, I'm going to read this correctly. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Look at this great assurance for Thomas. <clears throat> Because you have seen me, you have believed. This is great assurance. This is great confidence for Thomas. He required it in his life. I suppose the Apostle Paul required it. On the road to Damascus, he had to see the Lord. He had to hear the words himself, or his life would never have changed. Here it is. A great assurance, a great confidence. But more than that, Thomas heard something else. He found, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You know that goes all the way to this generation. Sitting here at UCC today, that promise is yours. You're blessed today if you believe. Because none of us have seen. Our eyes have not beheld the Lord Jesus yet. But we believe we will. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas found the true meaning of the gospel. God's blessing is received by faith in Christ for anyone who will believe. Thomas's life was then spent sharing the gospel with others, and eventually he went on to India, so, uh, south western part of India and Thomas found his mission in life. Uh, the Lord Jesus didn't just let him go. He had a mission for him. As the Father had sent the Lord Jesus so he was also sending Thomas and church history says, claims with good uh, valid reason that he went to southern India with a gospel and the Martoma church exists there. It's actually a denomination of churches now 
but the Martoma Church exists there today because of, and a friend of mine, by the way, his brother is a priest in the Martoma Church in southern India. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. Did Thomas believe it? Yes, he believed. He had seen and he believed and he went on to spread the gospel wherever the Lord Jesus was, would lead him in his life. Well, Thomas missed church that day. There were a lot of things he missed about it. He missed the fellowship with other disciples. He missed the words of peace received directly from Jesus. He missed the unmistakable evidence that Jesus is alive. He missed the joy that comes from knowing the living Christ. He missed the opportunity to receive a calling and a lifetime mission. He missed the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. These things Thomas missed on the first time Jesus appeared. But then he found patience and compassion. He found a personal faith. And he found the true meaning of the gospel. Wow. It's not really about what Thomas missed. That's not it at all. What it's really about is who he missed. It's about the wonderful grace and love of Jesus Christ that appeared to Thomas and appeared to others. He was showing them His great love and compassion for the world. This is what it is. Let's pray together. Maybe some doubters here today. Some of you have been struggling with doubt secretly in your mind and heart. And maybe even before God, you've been praying about it and hoping the doubts would go away. I'm sure Thomas himself did not, did not necessarily want to be doubter. It was just him. That's what he was experiencing. So today, friend, listen. This same Jesus that met Thomas says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. More blessed is there. That confession of Thomas can be your confession today. My Lord and my God. Can you just say that before the Lord? My Lord, my God. Deep from your heart and mind and your prayer before God. My Lord, my God. Can you just open up your doubt and say, Be gone forever, doubt. Be gone forever, doubt. Jesus loved Thomas enough to make sure he was certain. I can tell you that Jesus loves you enough to make sure you got the Word of God, the Bible, that tells you the truth. Today, if you're a doubter and you've been struggling with this, deep in your heart and mind, just tell the Lord, you're my Lord, my God. No longer someone else's, but my Lord, my God. That's your confession today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each one. Lord, I pray there would be great confidence and assurance in our hearts as we go about living day by day in Christ. That this confidence would come from that Holy Spirit that lives in us. Lord, work dynamically and powerfully in the hearts of each one today. There may be some that are in need of forgiving others. Lord, you called us to a ministry of forgiveness. And we saw it in the text today. Lord, help us to share forgiveness with others, just like we've received it. And to give out the message of forgiveness to the lost world. Oh, I pray for that. Lord, the mission you've sent us on. I know we're not apostles. We live 2,000 years later. But as the Father sent you, you sent us into this world too. Here we are, Lord. What are we supposed to do? Well, first we have to receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus, fill us with that blessed Holy Spirit, I pray. 
Fill us with that blessed Holy Spirit that Your Word and love would be known in us. That Your forgiveness would be experienced in our hearts first. And Lord, that we'd stop holding back on others and give them the forgiveness that we have received. Lord, grant it, I pray. Father, I pray for each one. There may be some that are really disheartened today. They need the joy of the Lord in their lives. Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, is joy. And Lord, I pray that you would increase the joy in that burdened heart as they unburden themselves before you and find the forgiveness they long for. May the joy of the Holy Spirit be in their hearts and be full in their lives. I pray for that. Oh God, it will not just be my prayer, but it will be the experience of everyone here today. I pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.